legitimate orders given and they had to be done. The remorse and sorrow is there uh, for those human beings who lost their lives. One feels sorry for them. One doesn't only feel sorry for the innocent people who've lost their lives, but even those who are not innocent who lost their lives, those who were the militants there, because after all, they have families also. And don't ever think that those who were involved in this operation uh, didn't feel remorse or pity or sadness or sorrow. They did for whatever happened. No one likes to kill. No one likes to destroy. No one likes to hurt. What impact has this had on you personally? It is an imp enormous impact. Once you put on your uniform, you have to accept these things. You have to um, accept the fact that there will be ups and there will be downs. But was this a price worth paying? I, I don't know. I really don't know. General Brar is clearly critical of Bindrawale. In fact, I did meet other Sikhs who felt Bindrawale should not have been in the Golden Temple complex in the first place, but they weren't prepared to say that on camera. Bindrawale still has passionate supporters who see him as a martyr and are unhappy with any criticism of their dead leader. Close to the Golden Temple, I came across a bookstall selling all kinds of Bindrawale memorabilia. What does it say on the back of his T-shirt, though? It's written Bindra Wala Shera. How old are you? I'm 18. 18. And is Bindra Wala a hero for you? Yeah. He, he was a great saint and great soldier. How are you connecting with what he says? By reading books, by you know, listening from other people. So, you are I'm Indian? What, I'm Indian, yes. Uh, you believe in Mahatma Gandhi? You, you were not you at the time of Mahatma Gandhi, but you say that he is the uh, father of nation. Why? By listening, by reading books. So same as that. Same with me. As a Sikh boy today, is anyone attacking your faith? Attacking? In, uh, not personally, but uh, in schools people attack. But you personally haven't seen anything yourself? Although Satnam feels a sense of injustice, he's clearly struggling to find any evidence to back it up. I'm encouraged that things have changed a great deal since 1984. Swords of protest in London. The Sikhs show their anger over Amritsar. The assault on the Golden Temple stunned India and the world. In Britain, there were large demonstrations denouncing Mrs. Gandhi. Several effigies of the Indian Prime Minister attracted the full force of the demonstrators' fury. A community that had been almost invisible was suddenly on the streets and making headlines. I have vague memories of seeing these scenes as an 11-year-old. Then they confused me. Now I understand them. In Amritsar, the military action may have ended, but the tragic story of 1984 was far from over. A few weeks after Operation Blue Star, a policeman called Beyond Singh brought his family to the Golden Temple, and he was so shocked by what he saw that he became withdrawn and more devout. The significance of this is that Beyond Singh was Indira Gandhi's personal bodyguard. Beyond Singh had travelled with the Prime Minister around the world, and was one of the most trusted members of her security team. But the events of June so outraged him that he began to plan Indira Gandhi's assassination. Although his superiors knew nothing of the plot, they were still nervous about having Sikhs so close to the Prime Minister, so they were moved from her protection team. Mrs Gandhi strongly opposed the change, and so Sikh guards remained on duty. Do you now fear for your own personal safety? Well, I've lived with danger all my life, and I think I've had a pretty full life, and uh, it makes no difference whether you die in bed or you die standing up. On the morning of the 31st of October, Indira Gandhi left her home in Delhi to take part in a TV interview. As she walked along the path, she saw Beyant Singh on duty and smiled. He drew his revolver, and fired five shots at close range. 
an accomplice, Satwant Singh, opened fire with a machine gun. Mrs. Gandhi spun round from the impact and crumpled to the floor. We regret to announce the death of the Prime Minister, Mrs. Indira Gandhi. Biant Singh was shot dead on the spot and his accomplice, Satwant Singh, wounded. He was later tried and executed. I'm confused about Indira Gandhi. It could be argued that Operation Blue Star showed she had little regard for the Sikh faith, and yet she retained her Sikh bodyguards against advice. But at present you hold no political office. You hold... Mark Tully knew Mrs Gandhi well, having interviewed her many times. How did he explain her decision to keep her bodyguards? Well, I think this was uh, Indira Gandhi wanting desperately to show that she was not an enemy of the Sikh community and wanting very much to do whatever she could to calm the thing down again after Operation Blue Star. But can you understand why some people see Indira Gandhi's action as an attack on the Sikh faith? Yes, of course I can understand the deep sorrow, horror of Sikhs. I mean, I know that if someone came and started firing at St Paul's Cathedral in London, I know the way that I would feel. Um, but I do think that also Sikhs should um, uh, realise that mistakes were made on both sides and that there was an, a, a great deal of violence going on, violence done by Bindran Wali's men. In 1948, when Mahatma Gandhi was assassinated, India was stunned. But the fact that the killer was one of their own meant there wasn't a violent reaction from Hindus. But in 84, when the news quickly emerged that Indira Gandhi's killers were Sikh, the world held its breath. How would Hindus now respond? As Mrs Gandhi lay dead in a Delhi hospital, a married couple called Gurmej Singh and Mahinda Kaur set off by train from the Punjab with their baby daughter to start a new life in Mumbai. They carried with them all their possessions and ambitious hopes for the future. They had no idea that Mrs Gandhi had been assassinated and were heading straight for trouble. <laughs> After seven hours, the train stopped at a station outside Delhi. Suddenly, a mob surrounded them and surged into the carriage. One Sikh mother in Mahinda's carriage saved her son's life by quickly tying his long hair into plaits so the mob would think that he was a girl. But the mob were not fooled by Mahinda's attempts to hide Gurmej between the seats. They dragged him onto the platform.